Hello everyone, I'm Mass Banker from Kaiser Power Electronics and welcome back to part 2 of hacking the IKEA 2 kW induction start. Um, today we will do the, some measurements. Uh, I have made a test setup that I will show you right away. So a quick overview of the test setup. There is the IKEA induction stove itself. I have a Pearson Model 110 uh, current transformer that's uh, 0 0.1 volt per amp sitting in the primary coil loop that's measuring the um, current flowing in the LC circuit of the work coil and work capacitor. I have a Tektronix P5200 differential probe uh, measuring the voltage uh, coming out of the inverter. I have my um, Tektronix A6909 two-channel isolator this is uh, the same as the uh, differential probe. This is needed because this is a floating circuit uh, and I do not want to uh, explode anything by grounding it through my scope. So this is connected to the uh, gate drive, um, gate and emitter of the IDPT. And this all connects up to my Rigel uh, oscilloscope here. So before we get started doing the measurements, let's first run through the oscilloscope setup. At channel 1, the yellow trace, we have the inverter output voltage. This is 250 volts per division. Channel 2 is the uh, LC primary circuit uh, current. This is the blue trace. This is 20 amps per division. And we have the purple trace on channel 3, which is the uh, gate drive waveform. This is 10 volts per division. Here we can see a simplified schematic of the resonant uh, circuit. We have the rectifier input, and we have uh, an input choke, and we have the DC bus link. Uh, so this first part, uh, the two uh, lined boxes at the left, we are not going to put much focus on those uh, two parts, but the resonant tank consisting of LR and CR, and we have the load on top of that, along with the IGBT switch, along with its anti-parallel diode. Those uh, will get our attention in a even more simplified diagram as we go through the waveforms uh, analysis. Inverter output voltage is measured across the resonant uh, inductance uh, and the work coil. The LC circuit current is measured with a current monitor between the inductance and uh, capacitance in the LC circuit. The gate waveform is measured between gate and emitter. For the first measurements, I will start up the induction stub in power mode 5. So let's first turn it on. And then going to uh, power mode 5. Um, we can now see that the waveform is going all over the place, so I will adjust the trigger level. So we can see now it stabilizes here, but hope. Oh, was this? It's just growing and growing and growing with the trigger until it's all gibberish again. And it goes lower with the trigger. Now one would wonder what is really going on here because why can't we get a stable uh, signal and why does it follow the trigger level? Well, this is uh, what quasi-resonant uh, inverters look like when you see it up close because if we zoom out it all makes much more sense. As we get out further we can see it starts to ramp. And as we get even further out, and we turn off the uh, gate drive, there. So, what we see here is the uh, 100 hertz full wave rectified mains envelope. And what is actually going on is that the inverter is only being turned on and off to the um, waveform of the mains current. I will take a picture of this and um, explain later why this is uh, good and why this is happening, why this is a part of this topology. Then we will go back and look at the uh, zoomed in waveform and also explain how the quasi resonance works when we look at the gate drive, primary current and inverter voltage. 
For the next measurement I will once again start the induction stop in power mode 5 and then slightly increase the setting up to 9 and we can see how the waveform changes going up into the higher power mode. Uh, I will also take some still photos of the two different waveforms from power level 5 to 9 and compare them later on as well as we will discuss the waveforms um, later on and regarding to the turning on and off um, periods of the quasi-resonant switching. But first, let's turn on the induction stop. Setting it for power level 5. So, here we have uh, the uh, maximum uh, amplitude waveform for power level 5. And as I increase this to uh, level 6, We can also see how the, uh, as we are now at 7, and now at 8, and here at 9. So if you notice that the um, frequency that we have down here, the current frequency is 22 kilohertz, but we had a maximum of almost 25 kilohertz. This is because the uh, power adjustment for a quasi-resonant uh, inverter is pulse frequency modulation. So the on period simply gets longer by running it at a lower frequency. But this will be discussed in much more detail from a still shot of this waveform. For the following waveform analysis we will use the uh, simplified circuit at the right side which is a simplified summation of the resonant inductor combining the inductance of the primary circuit, the load, the leakage inductance uh, and so on and the combined resistances. This makes uh, explanation uh, much easier as we, as we can uh, concentrate on currents and voltages flowing through these two components and not how it uh, interact with the, the load itself. A single switching cycle in the quasi-resonant inverter can be described in four modes, which goes over six time periods. Mode 1 goes from T0 to T1. This is where the IGBT is switched off and the current keeps incrementing to reach its peak at T1. Uh, the lines here is a bit uh, too far away from each other, but they would almost be on top of each other. So when uh, the uh, voltage across the inductor um, becomes the same as the DC bus, this is where T1 is and also where the current should have its peak. Mode 2 covers from period T1 to T4 and here the uh, voltage across the inductance gets higher uh, than the uh, DC bus uh, voltage. So after T1 it keeps rising as the current decreases until it reaches zero at T2, while the resonant voltage now reaches its, its maximum level. This is uh, the point where the transfer of energy stored in the inductor uh, to the capacitor is completed. From T2 the capacitor starts discharging the energy to the inductor. This causes the resonant voltage to decrease and it reaches its minimum level at T3 uh, as it passes the DC bus voltage. The resonant current starts to increase as the uh, voltage across the inductor goes below the DC bus. This is what happens at T3 to T4 and completes at T4 where the resonant current starts increasing again. Mode 3 is from T4 to T5. At T4 the voltage across the inductor goes to zero and below. This means that the antiparallel parallel diode D1 at the IDBT turns on naturally. Since the resonant current is flowing through D1, the voltage drop uh, across the IGBT remains zero. Therefore we have zero voltage switching. 
turn on of the IDBT can uh, be made any time between T4 and T5 while we are still below zero. Mode 4 is from T5 to T6. At T5 the current uh, changes direction from the negative to the positive and at the same time the IDBT is turned on. We can now see that the current rises up, un up until the switch IDBT is turned off again. At T6 is actually also where mode 1 or T0 starts all over again. So this was the complete cycle of one switching cycle in a quasi-resonant inverter. Looking at the uh, LC circuit current alone, uh, let's try to start up the inverter again at power level 5. And we can see here the once again the 100 hertz uh, envelope. And this is what is absolutely clever about the quasi-resonant inverter. It only draws power or current inside the 50 hertz uh, mains uh, waveform. So this makes the load look 100% resistive. So there's absolutely no need for power factor correction because we are not drawing any power out of phase uh, with the main supply. If we try to turn this up, uh, this was power level 5, if we turn it up to power level 9, we can see that the current only increases what we draw from the um, it's just gonna turn that off turn, uh, we can see that the power level only increases but it's still drawn within the mains waveform so this means that the cross resonant inverter can draw all the power it wants from this uh, from the wall so this basically means that it's perfect for small single faced uh, household items that you want to draw whatever you can get out of the wall. So that is for most out households 2300 watts, uh, at least in Europe where you have 230 volt AC commonly uh, fused with 10 amps or in some cases 13 amps so you could go a little higher there. But this is what makes the cross resonant inverter absolutely perfect for something like this cheap induction stuff. It's simple has a low uh, component count, is very powerful, really attractive uh, topology to use for the uh, manufacturers. Divided by the red line we have power mode 5 at the bottom and power mode 9 at the top. It can be observed that the off time of the purple gate drive signal is identical in both power modes. So this pulse frequency modulator operates with fixed off time. In a quasi-resonant switching inverter, the device does not have a fixed switching frequency, which is also clear from looking at the two waveforms. Due to the longer on time at high power, the resonant frequency is lower. The microcontroller waits for one of the negative half cycles in the collector voltage and then switches the IDPT on. The time between IDPT turn off and the first negative half cycle is fixed by the resonant frequency. The time between IDPT turn on and turn off is set by the microcontroller. The narrow frequency span from 22 to 25 kHz does not pose any significant problems in designing the magnetic components, but it is enough to get the resonant current to rise up to the maximum power level that can be drawn from a regular mains outlet. So a few things uh, explained about the circuit that I did not um, get into the first part. Uh, the first IC we have out here is the AP8010. It's a offline uh, switcher IC. This is a low voltage uh, power supply, uh, single chip. Has a inductor, high voltage capacitor, and then it has its uh, low side capacitors. Uh, for uh, a plus 18 volt supply that it gives to uh, the gate drive. Um, this is a small uh, 7805 um, for the 5 volt uh, logic supply. Um, it has its own capacitors. There is the Highway 09A um, microcontroller. has um, external capacitors for the uh, RC timing uh, for setting the uh, frequency. Uh, it has an internal uh, oscillator, uh, but needs a few external co components for this. 
Um, over here we have uh, voltage sensing uh, um, resistors. Uh, there is uh, for uh, mains voltage and there's for the uh, LC circuit voltage uh, and so on where it uses these uh, references in regard to keeping the quasi resonance switching. Uh, I will turn the board over so we can see the uh, back side of it uh, and what components are on there. At the back side of the PCB we can see the uh, two wires that are soldered in at the emitter and gate of the IDPT transistor. If we follow the trace down here we end up at two SOT transistors which are connected down to the uh, microcontroller itself. Now these two small transistors is all that is needed to drive a single IGPT in a quasi-resonant uh, inverter and simply because the zero voltage switching is done when we are at a negative current so all the current is flowing through the freewheeling uh, anti-parallel diode of the IGPT and then that makes uh, gives us plenty of time to turn on the IGPT again uh, because it won't conduct through the uh, IGPT die uh, before it gets into the positive domain again. So there's no need for a heavy sturdy driver that can deliver a lot of peak current because we have plenty of time for these two small transistors to turn on the IGPT fully. So thank you for watching part 2 of the IKEA induction stop test teardown abuse. Um, I hope you also enjoyed the enhanced production value since I switched over to use my account 5D for uh, filming with a external microphone so sound and picture should be much better except maybe that lightning down in a extremely stuffed <laughs> laboratory in a basement is impossible to get right so I can't fix that sorry about that that will wait maybe in the future when I get a much bigger lab we can look at lightning and but right now, let's stay focused on the technical and fun stuff. Um, so, um, the next uh, part that I will look at is uh, either hacking the control loops, looking into the voltage references, um, drive it manually. Uh, some people have uh, documented how to do this. Uh, if you look at uh, openschemes.com, they have uh, some good teardowns uh, some five, six uh, years back. Uh, these are some other um, Ch Chinese units, but these uh, primarily run on uh, comparators, whereas this actually has a, a microcontroller. And that is, of course, simply to protect their intellectual properties of the program. And so, uh, But maybe I will also just move right into uh, making a matching um, LC circuit and do some induction heating directly. Uh, maybe look into uh, do this uh, coupled uh, with a transformer, but the problem is that the inductance still has to stay relatively low. So we cannot just slap some uh, ferrite core uh, on the primary and couple it to uh, another LC circuit. But uh, more on this in part 3. If you like it, hit subscribe, click the bell, visit my website, visit the highvoltageforum.net, uh, um, sign up as a user, do your own project here, uh, basically join the community, um, have some fun. Right. See ya.